Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy Thursday out there. Gerald here with an update for you on that weather forecast for this weekend as well as next weekend. I will say we do have some very interesting things on the horizon here. Currently already dealing with one storm system and likely another one going into next week that we still have a lot of question marks about that need to be answered. So definitely going to give you an update on all that throughout today's video. Uh, I do also want to say here at the beginning, I do appreciate you joining me. It means a lot and I know the uh, kind of upload schedule has been very sporadic recently but just been really busy in class and you know really working on getting those grades where they need to be so I can uh, be as successful as I you know possibly can be throughout the future uh, and at the end of the day of course my education is my number one priority so uh, again I do appreciate y'all hanging in there with me and I know y'all are very understanding about it too so again just want to say thank you here at the beginning uh, now outside of that I'm not really sure if there's any more announcements here at the beginning so I guess we can go ahead and just jump right on into the forecast so uh, currently taking a look at satellite imagery. Uh, this is that first storm system I was talking to you about and kind of see this bit of a spin we're seeing over uh, much of Illinois currently. And all of that is due to a big old trough we have right now kind of working on into the country and beginning to slowly work its way off to the south and east and will likely fire up some storms for a lot of folks in the east coast going into tomorrow and even into our Saturday for some folks up into the northeast. So again, pretty big storm system right now. But outside of that, it's been really quiet out west to all clear blue skies as ridge is really built in and that ridge out west eventually will work into the east coast going into next week and we'll kind of uh, switch the patterns with stormy weather back out west and clear weather in the east going into early next week so again just kind of uh, watching this overall pattern work on through now, as for uh, radar imagery and uh, kind of what we're seeing at the ground level right now, again, thanks to that low pressure kind of in the Midwest, we are seeing some showers this morning uh, kind of in front of that here through much of Indiana and even stretching all the way down uh, through Kentucky, uh, even sections of Tennessee and down towards Mississippi and Alabama seeing some of those showers this morning. And all of this will continue into the afternoon, although uh, beginning to continue to move off towards the east as we get later on into the afternoon. And also this trough will begin to continue to dig further south. So uh, as that happens, happens expect that cooler air to kind of sink south as well with it as well as some drier air going into this weekend on the backside as that northwest flow kicks in behind this trough as it's beginning to kind of exit through the country but again outside of where we're seeing those showers this morning through much of the east coast although there may be some clouds where you're at overall still really dry east of the Appalachian chain and uh, that you know goes all the way from Florida up through Maine so again much of the I-95 corridor and uh, even places further west than there really nice weather through much of today but that will change going into tomorrow afternoon sorry uh, okay so let's go ahead and run you through this in future radar here again uh, this low pressure will continue to kind of spin away over the next couple of hours and by the time we get into this afternoon and evening again expect some showers and maybe even some rumbles of thunder here through much of uh, kind of Kentucky and um, Tennessee and even down into Mississippi and Alabama up towards Ohio as well uh, where we could again see a little bit more instability to help fuel thunderstorms but kind of further north where this low pressure is in itself uh, really just more of some good old-fashioned rain as that low is pretty occluded at this point uh, as you can see that cold air pushing pretty far in front of the low pressure system itself so getting kind of cut off from that energy supply so again, going into this evening, expect those showers and again, maybe even some rumbles of thunder to continue to push east overnight, crossing uh, much of the Ohio River Valley. And by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, uh, those uh, showers and storms are working into the Appalachian chain. So, uh, go, <clears throat> excuse me, going into about the time the sun is rising, pretty widespread showers through much of eastern Tennessee, western uh, Carolinas, up into the Virginias and even in towards Pennsylvania and from the Great Lakes as well, seeing some scattered showers on the backside of the cold front itself. So definitely need to watch that. And another thing we'll want to watch out for is uh, how much of this moisture do we get to kind of drive northward in front of that front could lead to some pretty widespread heavy rainfall as well through much of the mid-Atlantic tomorrow afternoon. All right, so that's uh, going into tomorrow morning. As we move this a little bit later on into the afternoon hours, again, this is that Atlantic moisture I was talking about kind of surging north. Uh, could see some uh, pretty widespread rainfall, maybe even a bit of a flooding concern for you folks up towards Philly, uh, Trenton, New York City, and uh, kind of surrounding areas getting some of that rainfall tomorrow afternoon thanks to that kind of fire hose effect from the Atlantic. Now, uh, as that's going on into the afternoon hours, we could see actually even a little bit of severe weather tomorrow through the Carolinas. We're going to potentially have a couple lines of storms to kind of roll on through. 
through during the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. So uh, for maybe those Friday night football games, I know we already have had some canceled or postponed due to these uh, storms that are expected. And this will be the most, um, I don't want to say summer-like, but maybe a little bit more spring-like kind of weather we've seen for uh, really the past couple months as we've had a really nice fall. And uh, again, that could change tomorrow, though, as we get a couple of these storms to roll on through. So uh, during rush hour tomorrow, it could be, uh, you know, a bit of a troublesome rush hour from uh, D.C. all the way down towards Raleigh and even back towards uh, Charlotte. Greenville, Spartanburg could see some of these lines of storms continuing to move on through. Uh, you know, going into the evening hours. So definitely need to watch that. And uh, main threats here would really just be, you know, uh, heavy rainfall, maybe a little bit of lightning, but uh, any kind of wind threat, I think will really be confined down here into the Carolinas uh, just due to that's where we're going to have the most instability for these storms to tap into where places further north and into the northeast and northern mid-Atlantic really going to just be some good old fashioned rain as that cold air is kind of going to limit any instability from working on through. Now, uh, going into tomorrow evening, as uh, that sun begins to set, that rain will move on through much of the southeast and should begin to clear out, and then we start working on that northwest flow. So, uh, for those um, north and uh, western facing peaks on the Appalachian chain, expect some rain showers. Can't even rule out a couple snowflakes mixing in there to the higher elevations uh, tomorrow evening and into the overnight hours. And while that's ongoing, still quite a rainy night through much of the northeast for your Friday night. And waking up on Saturday morning, still rainy in the northeast, although clearing out behind Behind that for much of the southeast and mid-Atlantic outside that northwest flow into the higher terrain. So I think Saturday afternoon as we move this ahead here, it's going to be quite nice for much of the mid-Atlantic southeast, although uh, likely a bit breezy and again could see some showers into the mountains. Uh, but outside of there, really most of the rain just left over into the northeast as that low pressure that swings on through kind of begins to phase off the coast of New England. And again, could be quite a breezy and wet weekend for a lot of folks into New England, but uh, very fall-like as well. So I'm definitely watching that. And then behind all of that, as that's continuing to roll on through the northeast, going into our uh, later half of Saturday, and even into Sunday, could get a bit of a short wave to kind of move in behind that trough as well, bringing once again some showers into uh, the Ohio River Valley. But overall speaking, uh, this weekend outside of the Northeast looks quite nice, especially into the Southeast and uh, much of the South as a whole and back uh, West into the Plains. <clears throat> looks like a really beautiful uh, fall-like weekend. So uh, taking a look at those temperatures, again, pretty average uh, fall weather right now. But as we go into our Friday afternoon, it's pretty easy to spot that trough and those cooler temperatures diving down south here. So uh, Friday afternoon, temperatures only getting into the 40s and 50s through much of the Midwest and Ohio River Valley. But where we see some of that uh, Gulf and Atlantic moisture surging head in front of the front is where we're going to see those higher dew points and higher temperatures and thus the higher chance of some severe weather uh, into the southeast going into our Friday afternoon as we had discussed earlier. Now, going into overnight Friday, you'll notice uh, this front is going to come through like a bullet. Uh, going into the second half of Friday, look at this temperature gradient in the Carolinas. Uh, after that line of some, maybe some severe storms roll on through, that cold air is going to come in quick. So uh, we could see, you know, temperatures that have a 20 degree discrepancy between only a couple counties as those lines of storms are moving through tomorrow afternoon into the Carolinas. So that'll definitely be uh, kind of fun to watch on radar, if you will. But uh, after that moves on through, going into our Saturday morning, quite cool temperatures back into the 40s for most of us and uh, some 50s of course scattered in there as well especially for you folks further south and into the northeast as well where the front hasn't quite moved on through uh, but Saturday afternoon again a beautiful fall like day for much of the mid-Atlantic and even into the south although I will mention it's going to get hot out here into the southern Great Plains uh, going into our Saturday and I'll move my face out of the way real quick to show you these temperatures um, again, uh, going into our Saturday afternoon, quite hot into the Southern Great Plains. Again, that ridge beginning to move eastbound uh, as this trough swings on through the east as well. Uh, so going into Saturday, very nice fall like in the east while getting, again, toasty back out west. Uh, temperatures getting here into the lower 90s, potentially here into uh, Southern Texas. So again, very hot weather back out there for you folks. And uh, going into our Sunday, much more of the same uh, like we're going to see on Saturday. Alrighty, so that's kind of this weekend in terms of weather, and uh, I know this weekend is probably going to be a big weekend for uh, you fall foliage fans going out there and taking a look at it, so I did want to run you through uh, our map here, and I say our map, this is actually from explorefall.com, run by some uh, really great meteorologists out there who are also kind of here from the mid-Atlantic uh, in my general neck of the woods, so really great guys, definitely go check out this website, uh, super impressive stuff that they've put together here, and I'm going to use it in this video to kind of run you through that, again, a fall foliage forecast this weekend. So let's go ahead and start off into the northeast again. 
again, uh, unfortunately it's going to be quite rainy this weekend. So for you folks up here, due to the raininess and kind of the breeziness, it might not be the best conditions. And also, unfortunately, for the higher elevations out here, we're just kind of getting past peak color as we start to get really close to Halloween here. Uh, you'll notice... Again, a lot of that color going to be kind of hard to come by uh, unless you're a little bit closer to the coast. But again, even then, unfortunately, the weather just isn't going to quite cooperate this weekend. Now, where I think it's going to be a great weekend for some fall foliage viewing is going to be down here into the Appalachian chain from the Virginias all the way down into the Carolinas. Uh, again, going to be quite beautiful going into this weekend. This is the forecast for October 21st, which... Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, is this Saturday. So I'm uh, going to move uh, in and zoom in a little more here. Again, into the higher terrains of the Virginias, uh, likely up near high color. Uh, some places on those highest terrains, especially in West Virginia, even getting past peak color at this point. So a great time to get on the parkway, and especially down into North Carolina, I think it's really going to be the hot spot for uh, kind of that peak viewing this weekend with very widespread, moderate to high color, and even peak color uh, kind of in those higher terrains, kind of around that 4,000 foot uh, threshold really starting to get into peak and then past peak uh, likely by the time you get up towards Mount Mitchell and some of those other peaks past 5,000 feet so again uh, very beautiful stuff going on here great weekend to get out on the parkway if you can manage to and outside of there even into the foothills and Piedmont of the Carolinas and mid-Atlantic uh, that uh, you know color really starting to grow as well here in Charlotte I will say uh, looking out kind of on the tree canopy is really starting to change quickly uh, for you folks up into the um, Ohio River Valley, again, really nice, uh, less uh, terrain-driven leaf change here and more just kind of as a whole leaf change, but still getting up near that moderate and high color and uh, again back out towards the northern Great Plains getting kind of past that peak color as we get later on into October here. So that's kind of uh, what we're expecting there on that front going into this weekend. Alrighty, so that's what we're expecting uh, this weekend in terms of, you know, a little bit of everything. I do want to talk about a likely uh, pretty big storm system next week that we're going to see. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you here is our 500 millibar wind map. And what this is going to show us is a couple things. One, what we're going to kind of see here in the near term, this is that trough that we've been talking about. That's what's leading to uh, these, um, you know, very rainy conditions as well as cooler conditions this weekend behind that rain and that cold front that we're seeing rolling on through the country. That likely moves on through uh, and going into early next week, you'll notice that pattern changes and then we then get some pretty big time ridging into the east coast and that will likely uh, kind of grapple on uh, to much of the east coast through much of next week so again next week i do expect temperatures to kind of warm back up a little bit as well as become quite clear so it doesn't look too disturbed through much of the east next week that's one important thing uh, the other important thing here is uh, the storm system that's likely going to follow that ridge and maybe potentially kind of uh, ride along that ridge going into next week so uh, let's go ahead and run you through that now Alrighty, so uh, what I'm going to show you really quickly here, actually move this ahead even a little bit more, is our vorticity map here at 500 millibars. Uh, this pretty much just helps to show us, you know, where we're seeing spin in the atmosphere, which is important for all sorts of things. But uh, what it does also very well is show us kind of where we're seeing low pressure. So going into early next week, into that Monday, Tuesday time frame, you'll notice we get a pretty impressive trough here of low pressure kind of that comes out of the Pacific and into California uh, going here into that Monday, Tuesday time frame. So uh, watch this piece of energy and we'll kind of have to see what happens with it next week as it likely then will eject into the plains. And that is whenever we could get some really kind of big time trouble in terms of some active weather going into the second half of next week, specifically second half of the work week from that kind of Wednesday into Friday time frame. Uh, now, after this kind of gets into the plains, that's whenever the question marks really rise here. This is our European model for that time frame. You'll notice uh, going into late next Wednesday, we have that low pressure kind of in the southern plains could cause some trouble, but another bigger uh, trough and kind of piece of energy that also is coming out of the north and the Euro model at least brings these two together and then kind of forms a very impressive mid-latitude cyclone up into Canada. Uh, the GFS model, a bit of a different story. Again, this is that piece of energy kind of down into the southwest early next week. The GFS kind of traps it there a little bit or doesn't kind of kick it out into the plains nearly as soon. And because of that, whatever piece of energy in the northern part of the country kind of keeps on moving. And uh, this uh, kind of depiction would bring a bit more of a southern track of the storm system and potentially uh, some winter mischief as far south as the lower 48 going into kind of the long range. Now, again, this is quite far out there, so a lot of question marks still need to be ironed out, but I did at least want to mention it here for you really quickly. 
so quickly uh, taking a look at the European model in terms of just kind of precipitation as a whole or a bit more of the kind of easier map to just look at, a little bit more pleasing to the eye probably. Uh, going into early next week, again, very dry in the east as that ridge kind of takes hold. But here comes that storm system. And going into Wednesday, we could have a very impressive cold front uh, with a you know very strong low pressure system, uh, followed by, again, much cooler air out of Canada. Uh, we'll have to see, though, again, how these two interact. Does that cold air kind of stay up into Canada? And do these uh, two pieces of energy merge together into a big mid-latitude cyclone, as depicted here on the European model? Or do we get more of a GFS solution, which I will show you here as well. I didn't pull up, but I'll show it to you really quickly. Uh, which shows a bit more of a um, you know southern track that could lead to potentially some wintry mischief you know as far south as the lower 48 for uh, potentially some pretty major cities. So uh, we'll have to watch again. Right now, models kind of all over the place a little bit uh, with the storm system, but I did just want to mention expect some uh, increasing activity over the next week or two. Uh, so another big thing, obviously, here is the temperatures. Thanks to that ridge moving in next week, expect temperatures to begin to increase or get above average again going into kind of that 6 to 10 day period. So kind of getting a little bit closer towards Halloween here, or at least the week before Halloween, expect temperatures to once again come back up. But behind that storm system that would likely move through again in that 6 to 10 day time period, could see some cooler air funnel in behind that. We'll have to see, though, how far south and how far east does that cooler air get? So get a lot of details to iron out here, but what we do feel confident in is uh, kind of nice conditions to start next week, followed by this kind of rainy weekend, and then some kind of storm system out into the plains. And then the big question will be, what track does that take? Does it go up into Canada? Does it kind of continue to work east? And how far south does the cold air associated with that storm system get as well? So get a lot of things to iron out. Just wanted to keep you prepared here and let you know, could get a pretty impressive fall storm uh, going out into the next seven to 10 days. Alrighty, so this video kind of went a little bit long, maybe not too long, but again, you know, definitely haven't had a video in a while, so I thought it was important to definitely kind of go in depth a little bit on some of those important topics. Uh, with that said, though, I do also want to add here, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, I won't have a video out again until next week. Uh, it is fall week, or excuse me, fall break for me this weekend, so I'll be home for the weekend, kind of away from uh, all of my recording equipment, if you will, and uh, it's not very easy to kind of haul all of this home for just four days. So just wanted to let you know there, this will be my last video until next week. Uh, so. I'm glad I remember to say that because I almost did not. Anyway, though, again, have a great rest of your day and have a great weekend as well. Get out there and enjoy it if you can. Uh, but until then, I'll see you next time.